There are three ways to place the clamp with the rubber dam. First, you can place the clamp followed by the rubber dam, or you can place the clamp with the rubber dam simultaneously, and we use this mostly in winged clamps that we talked about in the lecture. The ones with the wing clamps will help with more retraction, but it's difficult to place the rubber dam over them once they're inside, so we place them together along with the rubber dam. And there is a third way of placement, when you place the clamp after placement of the rubber dam, and this we will also explain later on. We'll start with the easiest way that I found is easiest, is placement of the clamp followed by the rubber dam. But first, we have to ligate the clamp with the dental floss. The reason why we place a dental floss and tie it around the rubber, uh, the rubber dam clamp is because we want to prevent aspiration or swallowing of the clamp in case the clamp falls down or moves during the procedure. So what do we do? We insert one part of the floss inside the hole. I'll go ahead and insert it. And then we have to tie it all around the clamp so here I've inserted one part inside the hole. I'll go ahead and tie it. And then I'm going to rotate it all around the bow. I'll make a tie. And then I'll go ahead and rotate my dental floss all around the bow to secure it. I will not just suffice with one hole. I'll just go ahead and make it all around the bow. Pull it out with a tweezer and make things easier. And then go ahead, rotate it again. Bring it closer and then rotate again and then rotate again all around the bow going on the opposite side we'll insert it in the other hole on the other side of the jaw and then come out and then make another tie so now once we're done rotating around the bow I think this is enough it has secured both sides even if the clamp will break in half the bow will be secured on both sides with the dental floss and we can always pull it easily. So we'll go ahead and insert the, uh, the dental floss in the other hole on the other side of the jaw and then we're going to ligate it again. This is how it's going to look. I have started on one side, made a, uh, made a tie and then went ahead and ligated all around the bow of the clamp went out from the other hole and now I'm going to make another knot and then we'll leave this part to the outside of patient's mouth so we'll be able to retrieve the clamp whenever any accident happens or it flies away. I'm going to make another knot and then I'm going to go ahead and place it on the jaw model. So this is how it is. Okay, so once we have ligated the clamps, we made sure that the dental floss goes all around them we're good to go. We're going to use the rubber dam clamp forceps in order to hold the clamps. These two prongs that you could see should fit inside the holes in the jaw. Once you fit them inside, you'll be able to make your clamp bigger by pressing on the handles or you can release by making it smaller. How do we place the clamp on the tooth? We decided that uh, our retainer tooth is going to be tooth number 46. We go ahead, press on the forceps to make the clamp bigger. We slide it from the lingual surface first onto the buccal surface. We have to make sure, and then we can go ahead and get the forceps out. We have to make sure that the clamp is stable, it's not moving, that the prongs have four-point contact with the four line angles of the molar. We have to make sure that it's not pressing on the tissue, it is only in contact with the tooth, and it is in contact with the four line angles of the tooth.